Hi, this is Nora and this is the story of our Ellie. If you have not already watched the story about the pregnancy, um, you'll want to do that first before you watch this because it will explain a lot of things um, before I dive into this story. So ever since I was very, um, ever since I was young and started being fascinated with birth and having babies, I wanted to do home births and I just loved that idea. I loved the idea of just being in your home and it being comfortable and natural. And um, so when we got married, I suggested that to Michael and learned pretty quickly that he was not comfortable with it. It was something that he was too nervous to do, understandably so. I mean, you know, there's risks and um, with, you know, not being in a hospital, if something were to happen, that was his, those were his biggest fears. So with our set, my second pregnancy, um, with my first pregnancy, we were not anywhere close. We weren't in an area that had any kind of midwife um, services. So we just went with a regular OB. And then um, with my second pregnancy, I we decided to do a birth center. And so we um, sat down with the midwife and Michael really liked her and um, felt very com com confident in her um, care and skills. And we were gonna do it at a birth center, close to a hospital at a birth center and um, not at home. I think a lot of it too was Michael's, um, you know, he, we, there, we hadn't had a full-term birth and he, you know, the mess and all the different, if anything were to go wrong, he wouldn't know what to do. So um, that's was the plan with our second um, son, David. Well, then that all changed when I went into labor, uh, premature labor at 22 weeks and um, I was out of state and so I delivered in a hospital, um, our, our little David in a hospital and then with the next pregnancy there was a, a lot of complications in the sense of okay now how do we, how can I stay pregnant and so we saw a lot of um, high risk doctors and they said that I had to have a cerclage and I um, had a cerclage, I was having preterm labor pretty much from 16 weeks on. I was constantly taking all the different kinds of medications to stop labor. I was on bed rest. I ended up with a blood clot. So then I was getting um, blood thinners and that was, it was just a lot. And they told us at that point that I would never be able to have a pregnancy without a cerclage. Um, several different doctors um, told us that. So then fast forward to the next pregnancy, I went through generally the same, um, the same things, except I didn't end up with a blood clot, <laughs> thankfully with that one. And then um, come to this pregnancy and we were planning a home birth and everything went amazing with the pregnancy and God gave us a s extremely normal pregnancy. And so as we were getting closer, we started to act actively planning and I have a friend that is a, um, that was a roommate of mine in college and is a midwife and so she came up to the area ready to the ready to deliver the baby and she did some um, prenatal visits at home checked up on the baby the position was good everything was fine and um there was really i, I mean it was just there's no no complications i started having um a few braxton hicks here and there towards the last few weeks which was unusual for me because with all the other pregnancies oh well especially with corbin i was having contractions all the time so to not have any contractions was was unnormal and um i didn't know the last cervical check i had was at um 24 weeks when they you know measured the effacement and everything and it was all normal and all fine so uh, other than that i didn't have any reference for you know where my cervix was or if i was effaced or dilated or anything like that we didn't i didn't do any cervical checks um i have to i have to give, give a um, disclaimer I'm going to stop here and give a disclaimer. This is going to be somewhat graphic because it is about birth and I'm not sure how graphic to get. So if you do not want to listen to the story of a birth, please stop watching the video now um, because I guess I don't want to have any responsibility for scarring you. And um, yeah, so that's a fair warning. It, it is going to be a little bit graphic. So I started having a few contractions here and there uh, a couple weeks out, and um, but nothing consistent or nothing really to speak of. Then fast forward to February um, 23rd in the evening. It was a Tuesday night, and I was started having 
contractions that were actually pretty close, but they were not consistent. They, it was a, like um, probably four or five hours of contractions that would kind of be like 10 minutes and then 20 minutes and then eight minutes and then 15 minutes, you know, and it was kind of jumping around and some of them were pretty strong, but they weren't um, getting consistent at all. And they pittered out and I went to bed. And the next day I um, wasn't having any contractions anymore and I woke up and everything was normal. And um, we did not have our room ready yet. So we were hurriedly sorting through all of the clothes and all of our hot room and trying to get the room ready because I realized, okay, this is a little bit different than hospital birth in the sense of, I don't just get to get to, get to go to a clean hospital room. I'm having the baby here and I want it to be clean and, and so I can relax completely. And so we were trying to get everything ready. And I was like, I was thinking, no, but the baby can't come yet because I'm not ready yet. And um, my mom was having a really good day. And that was a huge um, answer to prayer that day. Um, we had just found out that her chemo was not working. And then because of that, she stopped chemo. And a lot of how horrible she was feeling was because of chemo. And so she was kind of on the rise out of chemo at this point and feeling really well, um, beginning to feel well. And so it was a good day for my mom and we were, um, it was a beautiful, beautiful day. The kids played outside. It was a Wednesday. Hi, go. What are you doing? I'm really stuck. You what? I'm stuck. Oh, are you listening? Oh, are you listening to baby Ellie? Yeah. It's stuck. Is it good? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi, Dylan. Okay. What's her name? Hello. Can you say baby Ellie? Baby Ellie. Where's baby Ellie? Baby Ellie. Is that baby Ellie? Yeah. Okay. And, um, but I wasn't having any contractions or anything. And then it was Wednesday night. Michael took the kids, the two oldest, to, well, and we didn't have Ellie yet, so was, Michael took the two kids to church, and I stayed home with my mom um, to help pull it up on the church on the TV and watch church with my mom. And um, at that point, I no contractions or anything. Michael came home from church with the kids, and um, my brother came over, and I helped my mom with her evening meds and getting her all set for bed. That was around nine o'clock, and then we just kind of talked more, and I was cleaning off my mom's dresser, and um, Michael put the kids to bed, and then we, Michael and I were just, uh, then everyone kind of left and went, was down for the night. Michael and I were just in the living room and I kind of had, I had like a contraction and I was thinking, oh, okay, you know, I'll probably, you know, pick up a little bit tonight with these contractions again and then they'll pet her off. And so I went downstairs and went to start cleaning our room and sorting the clothes and it was 10 o'clock and I was starting sorting the clothes and the contractions just all of a sudden just started coming consistently five to six, seven minutes apart. And they were pretty strong and it was just kind of out of the blue. And uh, so I'm sorting the clothes and it, I was, I started timing the contractions just to see. And so I was, you know, timing them and then it got to be like 1030 and I had had contractions from 10 to 1030 every five to seven minutes apart. And so I texted Michael and I said, honey, you need to get down here because we need to get this room ready because this baby may be coming. And I texted my midwife. And at that point I really didn't think the baby was coming that day. I just, you know, was thinking, okay, you know, this is, things are going to start happening soon. I'm, I'm, I am close to delivery, whether or not the baby comes today and we really need to get this room ready. And so the contractions kept coming and they got stronger and I was starting to breathe, you know, have to breathe through them. And, um, I was texting my midwife and I said, you know, and she said, well, should I come? Do you think I should come? And I said, uh, I don't know. I said, how about I need to get in the shower? I'll get in the shower. And then when I get out of the shower, um, you know, if the contractions are still coming, then I could text you and you can come over. And at that point she had decided, you know, I probably should just come over anyway. Thankfully, thankfully she decided that. And, um, she didn't want to make me to feel bad, you know, by making the decision. If I made the decision and I didn't go into labor and she was just over here and nothing happened. And I told her, I said, that's probably a good idea because <laughs> Michael really doesn't want to have to have this baby alone. And so, um, we, she, she decided, I think at that point she decided she was going to start getting ready to head over. So I went up and, um, got in the, was going to get in the shower. And at that point it was around like 10, um, 10 45, 10 50 or so. And I was getting ready to get, get in the shower and I got in the shower and the contractions 
picked up and they got a lot closer together and I was like, trying to wash my hair and shave and do everything in the shower and I was not getting very far in between contractions and they were painful and I was bent over and, and at, at that point I was thinking okay no this is actually this has got to be the real thing and then all of a sudden my water broke and that was right at about 11 15 my water broke and so I hurried up and tried to finish quickly got out of the shower and I texted Michael and Hannah both you know my water just broke and it was like um that was the first the first time it kind of broke before I knew I was for sure in labor and um the it was like I could hear and feel a pop <laughs> and it gushed everywhere and so then I was trying to get ready dressed and everything enough to go back <laughs> downstairs to the room and I was already having trouble function functioning in between contractions because the contractions were coming so quickly and I at that point I wasn't timing them anymore I just real I just noticed I don't have much time to get anything done in between and I was thinking man I'm not even gonna get back downstairs and so I got dressed fairly finally and I got downstairs midwife got here um I think she got here around like 10 30 or so um 10 30 10 35 and I come downstairs and she's here and um she she and Michael were trying to get like the plastic on the bed and get everything ready and I'm bent over having interactions that I can't even I, I was already, you know, they're already really painful and I was, and I made the comment, you know, they're coming, they're coming really close. And so I finally, they, they got the bed ready and I got on the bed and they just picked up and I could not, they were just coming. And I remember thinking, man, this, this is like, this is awful. And I was thinking, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this for very long. And uh, <laughs> I had no idea how quickly I was progressing at that point. Um, I was thinking, you know, Michael and I had talked, well, should we wake up my mom? Because I really wanted my mom to be there. And she, the only birth that my mom had been able to see of mine was David's. And obviously with, um, with him being born at 22 weeks and only living two hours, there are a lot of emotions with that. And it wasn't necessarily, um, I mean, it was extremely, a very ext extremely special time, but it was um, bittersweet. And so I really wanted my mom to be able to be here for her birth, but... I didn't want to wake her up because at this point with um, just a lot of the different medications she was on and things um, she waking up suddenly sometimes could be bad with just she she would be very disoriented and groggy and very very confused and I didn't want to cause her that so I decided we decided not to wake her up and I had no idea how quickly it was gonna go anyway I thought well maybe you know in the morning she'll she'll wake up and then she can be here for the birth and um, but anyway so then uh, the contractions were getting were super strong and um all of a sudden I and if I, this was about so at about 10 50 or so I started my body just started pushing and I couldn't control it I was not trying to push and I just it just I it just started pushing <laughs> and I remember saying I can't I'm pushing and I can't I can't stop I can't help it I'm just pushing at that point my midwife hadn't hadn't even checked me yet to see if I was dilated or how dilated it was and I remember thinking oh no I'm you know I probably my body's not ready to push and now I'm pushing and this is gonna be really bad <laughs> and um, finally by the time she actually like checked me I you could already see her head her head was already coming out and so um, I was just continue to push and she said you know she said everything's fine she, and I pushed and pushed and I I think I pushed for about um I was pushing for about seven minutes maybe it was just um the contractions just didn't really stop <laughs> and she was born <laughs> at 10 57 p.m on February 24th Michelle Hope entered the world and wow what a pain <laughs> and my mom walked through the door just 10 seconds, literally 10 seconds after she was out. And as she was walking to the room, because the door, the door was locked, we had left the door open, she was able to see them lift her up towards me and Michael was able to help catch her and give her to me. And um, I remember just laying there in complete shock. <laughs> I, was just, I was so shocked. I had, it was just, how did that happen? <laughs> it, was, it just happened so fast. I didn't have even time to think. I remember telling, uh, I think I told my sister, by the time that I realized, by the time that I was realized that I couldn't do it anymore, I was already done <laughs> because I didn't really have time to think about how strong the contractions were getting. I was already pushing and then um, she was here and she was born completely.
completely healthy. She was crying. Uh, for, she cried for a little bit and she stopped and she stopped crying and she was just very, very calm. And um, it was absolutely amazing. I can't even describe for you how amazing and how smooth it was. It was just perfect. And um, my mom got to cut the cord, cut her cord. And then um, it was just, it was just perfect. It was just, I can't even describe for you how perfect it was. And um, then the placenta took a little while to come out. I wonder if that partly was because of how quickly she was born. But I was hard, I had hard, very minimal bleeding, extremely minimal bleeding. And the placenta came out fine. And um, then my sister and her boyfriend showed up and were able to get, they were just, they showed up just a few minutes after she was born. So she was able to get some pictures and, um, and some video of, of everything. Hey. Oh, thank you. Smiling at her daddy. daddy. Do you hear daddy's hey. boy? <laughs> oh, she's thinking about crying, but she's kind of like, hey. breathe. <laughs> it's kind of relaxing though too, like boy, that was tough. That was a lot of work. Was that quick? Was it quick for you or did you know all along? <laughs> she was doing a bunch of stuff. I told her, I said, this is your last day. She was doing all this stuff today. <laughs> ah, okay. Had some practice well, last night, I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, you're just a, are you going to be a night owl? Oh, there you go. Hey. There's so much more alert home oh births, goodness. you know. And the, the funny thing is, is Kezia and Corbin were sleeping just uh, on, in the room right next to us. And the door was open the whole time and they slept through the whole thing. <laughs> they, slept, they slept through the whole thing. And um, it was just amazing to have the baby at home where it's comfortable. My dad also slept through the whole thing, which he was probably the one that was the most worried about it about it and um does not like anything with blood or birth and he slept through the whole thing and so it was just um it was just amazing my wed wife cleaned everything up and got everything um cleaned up and i was able to start breastfeeding and um did we did skin to skin and just soaking up baby ellie and um my mom then went to bed and uh, my sister and her boyfriend left and we were just able to just have an uh, amazing night getting lots and lots of baby snuggles and, and sleeping here and there. And the next morning um, was amazing to be at home and, you know, have our kids wake up and they just got to come running in and meet their little sister who was born in the middle of the night and, you know, and my dad and just to not have to worry about um, the all the uncomfortable things of ho the hospital and to be at home and um, it was perfect. It was perfect and I think sometime I'll have to do a video um, just kind of explaining the differences between the different births because now I've had um, I've had two hospital births and one home birth and I had one natural hospital birth without any pain medication and I had one with an epidural and then I had a home birth obviously naturally and so maybe sometime I'll do a video or um, take questions on on the differences and ex differences if that's something that you're interested in let me know um, and also uh, if maybe sometime I'll do a video on the fir my first two on Corbin and Kezia's birth stories as well. But anyway, I could not have asked for a better experience. I mean, from the time that labor started until the time she was born was less than two hours. And it was a whirlwind. And I felt amazing afterwards. I mean, I had had a tiny little um, surface minimal tear from um, my probably mostly due to the part that the fact that I had tear previously with my other two. Um, and um, my midwife stitched, stitched me up, so it was, um, she just stitched us. She said it, she didn't have to, it wasn't something that really I needed to do, but it probably would um, be less painful if she did, and so um, she did, and um, I had no, uh, I had no burning <laughs> or, um, ve and very minimal achiness and soreness at all. I was just up and around, and um, yeah, <laughs> from right immediately after birth till till now and so anyway it was absolutely amazing her name i wanted to explain quickly before i end this video on um why we named her michelle hope and i think it's probably a little bit self-explanatory if you know my mom's name but my mom's name is michelle and so we named her after my mom but also michelle is the female variant of michael which is her daddy's name 
and means who is like God. And I think that encapsulates everything about our little Ellie and her story. Um, just every little detail along the way from the very beginning of finding out and being completely surprised and shocked and have, you know, all the decisions that were made along the way and coming back to the States and my mom's um, cancer diagnosis and all the journey through chemo and different treatments and, and, um, and everything all the way to her birth, you see God's hand in everything. I mean, there's no way you can't see God's hand in everything. It's just so evident and so, so, um, present in every little detail. And so I felt like we, we felt like who is like God was a great, um, way to, um, and kind of just bring all that together in her name. Um, we nicknamed her Ellie for, um, I thought Ellie was, I, I, I like Ellie. It's a cute little nickname in that way. Um, it's a little, it sounds a little more girly for a little girl than Michelle. Michelle's a big name. And, um, then we named her Hope and with everything that goes along with fighting cancer and a terminal diagnosis, our hope is in God. And, um, without him, you have no hope in what, you know, whether it's hope here in this life or hope eternal, God is our hope. And, um, I don't know. Anyway, I just love her name. And I think that it really gives a good, accurate picture of our little Ellie and her story. And her story is amazing. And it was written by God. And all of our stories are written by God and ordained by him. And um, it's just amazing to step, take a step back and pause for a little moment and appreciate um, who God is and how he orchestrates our life. I hope that you enjoyed that. And at some point I'll probably do a Q and A about different things. Um, and if you have any questions, but you have a wonderful day and take a moment to see and acknowledge God in your life.